Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Engineering Dynamics. In this video, this is our third video into the topic of rotor dynamics. And in the last two videos, we talked about the gyroscopic moments and how to get the equations of motion. Then we talked about a rotor with symmetric bearing stiffnesses and about the eigenfrequencies of that system and the eigenvectors. And in this video, we will be talking about a response of our system to a unbalanced mass. So if we have this system where we have the center of mass not on the rotation axis, how will our system behave? So we had the gyroscopic moments in the last video. We talked about how we get the equation of motion of our system. Then we had the eigenvalue problem where we got our eigenfrequencies and eigenvectors. Then we talked about the Campbell diagram where for one rotation speed, we will have two possible eigenfrequencies. One is the forward whirl and one is the backwards whirl. And now we would like to talk about the response of our system to a unbalanced mass. So we have a constant force because if we're rotating and our center of gravity is not on the rotation axis, the mass will basically pull the rotor in the direction where it's rotating. So if we have our system, this is, let's say, the mass matrix. This is our gyroscopic matrix and this is the stiffness matrix and now we have a additional force coming from the unbalanced of mass and the force has always the same direction where the point or the unbal or the actual center of gravity is so the center of gravity for example is here so this vector is from the center to the uh, center of mass or center of gravity is our force. So we have the rotation speed and the position vector. And for this kind of system, where we also say that kx and ky are equal, we propose a solution that is a cos and a sine. Because if we derive it once and we derive it twice, we will get al always the same uh, solution. But we have to be careful because here, this is a very diagonal matrix. K is a diagonal matrix, but G is non-diagonal or it's diagonal, but not in the right direction where we want it to be. So technically, if we derive it once and then, so it, here we would have a sine and here we'd have a cosine, but because it's non-diagonal, we will introduce a sine and a cosine into the, so we will have here, this would be a cosine, this will be also a cosine, x dot is a cosine as well, but x dot is, because of the non-diagonal part, will turn out in the lower, so in the second equation, and this will be actually, in this position, we will have a sine. But we can just ignore that, because we said that we're talking about a system with equal stiffness into x and y, we can just diagonalize it in a different way. So let's say we have, here is our cosine, no, here is our sine and this is our cosine, we will get a omega times cos and a omega times sine. But if we just diagonal, uh, this will be actually a minus. So this will be again a plus. So we can say that, well, we just switch places. And because we have a k that is equal, we can just say that, well, this is a cos and this is a sine and just switch this matrix and get twice the same equation. So if we said that, well, kx and ky are not equal, we couldn't do that. But because we're saying, well, kx and ky is equal, and we see that sine and cosine will turn to the same thing, we can say, well, we just ignore that all and say that mathematically correct, get two equations or two of the same equations for x and for y. So if we solve that equation now, we will just, what we're actually looking for is this amplitude. So if we have, if we just look at one equation, because the second one is the same, 
we just need this solution. So we will get A is equal to mass times eccentricity times our rotation speed minus our rotation speed squared, or here we also have a squared, times our mass. This mass is just a mass plus the inertia around z and x, uh, x and y, and the rotational inertia around z, and of course the stiffness. So now we know that for a certain speed, or for a certain rotation speed, we will have a certain amplitude. And we can now plot this amplitude over time and see where we fall into resonance and where we don't fall into resonance. And this is now, again, our Campbell diagram right there. And this is our frequency response function. And we see that we started zero because if we're not rotating, we're not vibrating. We're slowly approaching our first eigenfrequency, going to infinity because we have this equal to closer and closer to zero. And this is our eigen or where we hit the eigenfrequency. And then we go down to a constant value. Well, why do we go down to a constant value? Because this is dependent on omega squared and the this is dependent on omega squared. And if we have infinity divided by infinity, we will have to just take the derivative with the L'Hopital rule. And we see that, well, yes, we're actually going to a constant. And the interesting part is, is even though we're having a unbalanced mass, we're not actually tickling the backwards world. So we're only hitting, this is the forward world, and this is the Sorry, this is the backwards world. And even though we're going through, we're actually running through the first eigenfrequency. So we're exciting with the first eigenfrequency. We will not fall into resonance. And this is because the, the rotation, so the eccentricity is only exciting the first eigenfrequency. And the force of the rotating mass is orthogonal to the eigenvector of the second eigenfrequency. So this is why we have like some kind of uh, spatial convergence where the force of our unbalanced mass is not exciting our eigenfrequency of the backwards world because the mode is actually orthogonal to the mode of the, or the force is orthogonal to the mode. So again, to summarize, if we have a system where we assume that we have a equal stiffness in x and y. We can just put this here and this there, remove the minus, and we will have two equations for one unknown. And those two equations are actually completely the same because if we have a sine here, we can remove that. We have a cosine here and a cosine here. So we get two equations of the same kind. Then we have our amplitude. And this amplitude can be plotted in a frequency response function. So don't confuse this with the Campbell diagram. This is this one right here. And we are the most important part to understand is that we're hitting resonance at the forward world, but we're not hitting resonance at the backwards world. If you have, if you want the numbers, you can just plot that in Python and understand it uh, even better. But take care that this axis is now logarithmically scaled. So it actually looks something, well, this is too bad. It will look something like this. I hope this video gave you a better understanding about how we can work with rotors and how a unbalanced mass will only tickle the first or the forward world and how we get this solution. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. I will do my best to answer them. Thank you very much for your attention and I'll see you next time.